that's the head. See how big the head is? Holy cow. Yeah, she's Greg. strong too. Hey everyone and welcome to Nature with Gabe, the channel that connects you to nature and incredible people like my friend Greg here. Today, Greg and I are going to be out looking for turtles and we're going to give you some tips on how you can try and find turtles while hiking creeks and, you know, just going out and looking for turtles during the day. If you're not familiar with Greg, he has an awesome uh, YouTube channel uh, called Greg's Turtle Haven and he's an expert on turtles. He knows so much. He's a, just a wealth of knowledge and so I'm really happy to be heading out and uh, looking for turtles with him. So we'll see what we can find. Uh, we'll keep you updated. So we're currently looking for soft shell, soft shell turtles and they really like sandy areas because they can dig quickly into the sand and get away from predators. Um, it helps, helps them exfoliate their, their unique shells and keep them healthy. Um, and so right now we're looking to see along the bottom of the creek if there's any areas that have been disturbed from a uh, soft shell potentially digging in. Um, there's little things that you can look for that can increase your odds of finding a turtle, but really paying attention to the different characteristics of the bottom of the creek, looking for um, discarded mollusks or other, you know, weird things on the bottom can be a great way to um, start to learn different patterns and habits that different turtles have. So soft shells are one of my favorite turtles. They're super unique. Um, they have a leathery shell, they're really flat, and they're really fast swimmers. Uh, so hopefully we can Hopefully we can find one to share with you guys, uh, but we're gonna keep looking. So what I spotted right here is this is where a soft shell has gone in and buried itself in the sand. It'll push this sand away as it goes under, and then where it puts its head up for air is that little spot right there at the front. Uh, so this is what I look for. I look for shallow areas during the day. The females are going to rest in the sand during the day and come out in the early evening to forage. Uh, sometimes they bask during the day, but uh, the heat of the summer here, it gets so hot, they would rather just take it easy and feed at night. See, there's the head. Oh, yeah. That's the head. See how big the head is? Holy cow. Yeah, she's Greg. strong, too. And these guys can scratch. They can bite. They have a long neck. Yeah, so you don't always have to go in and grab the turtles, but we wanted to get this one out just to show you guys a beautiful, large, adult, female, spiny, soft shell. Now the males are a lot smaller than this, right, Greg? Yeah, yeah, males are less than half the size. So Very these turtles neat. can get up to about 20, 21 inches. Males usually max out around seven inches, maybe eight for a big one. Wow. But you can see she has a pretty chunky head because she's like the loggerhead musk. Uh, her diet is gonna be crustaceans and mollusks. You can get a good good view of those jaws, and they're actually the only soft shells are the only turtles with lips that actually cover the jaws and keep them sharp. Wow, very cool. All right, here's the release. Let this beautiful turtle go back into its creek. Here she goes, like a rocket, and then she's gonna immediately find a place to bury. loggerhead musk turtle and these guys are part of a group of turtles that are found uh, across a lot of the eastern half of the U.S. and they are the musk turtles. They're the genus is Sternotherus and with the loggerhead musk turtle it's Sternotherus minor and what they are is they're a little mollusk eater. They eat a lot of little mollusks and crustaceans and they get the name loggerhead because they grow these you know enlarged heads with you know big jaws and big jaw muscles to crush up these little clams and so when I want to look for these guys in nature, I'm going to look for you know clear flowing streams that have a lot of uh, mollusk and crustaceans in them, and you're going to look for like all the little open clam shells all over the bottom. And you know sooner or later, if you're in the right spot, you'll just see these guys kind of zipping around, and they can get really, really um, locally abundant. You can just walk into areas that are just like a pocket of them and find you know upwards of 20 all in one area together. So really cool turtles, uh, one of my favorites. Here, off 
And you get to say that? Like a big meal? <laughs> oh, I played hockey goalie. Went right into my shin. There we go. Nice. Uh, but yeah, you can tell it's a male by those long claws on the front. And this is about as big as you're going to see a male. I mean, that's pretty dang big. So what's the difference between the general habits of a cooter versus slider because they're often confused. So uh, cooters are going to be more herbivorous and um, almost from the time they hatch they're feeding on um, a lot of aquatic plants and algae. Uh, sometimes they'll eat you know plants that overhang the creek uh, but just complete herbivores you know kind of like cattle and they that's just kind of the, the lifestyle they have now. Compared to a slider they have like a lower sleeker shell uh, because they like to live in flowing streams and stuff with current and so what this does is this gives them the ability to feed on algae on rocks in swift flowing water and the water just kind of cuts around them. And they have larger rear feet than a slider. Um, they don't have the serrations you'll see on the edge of a slider shell. So you've got big leech. Right here too. Yeah. And these guys are neat too. These are turtle leeches. You won't really find these on anything other than turtles. And in small numbers they don't really cause them that much harm. but um, you know, they can infest a turtle, and I've seen it before, but they're, you know, pretty gross. <laughs> but, you know, a lot of people have the idea that they, they cause them a lot of harm, but they really don't. Um, they're just more of a, you know, coexistent little parasite. But, yeah, pretty cool. Always need to find these guys. And like I said, males have those long claws. They use those for courtship with the females. They'll come and kind of wave those in the female's face and kind of tickle their face to put them in the mood, which is cool. It doesn't work for me, but it works for them. All right, so we're gonna release this turtle exactly where we found it, right here by this little log jam in the water. So Greg and I just got to another spot and Greg went after a, a basking turtle and came up with this turtle. So this is a little male spiny softshell turtle. Earlier in this video you saw the adult female and you can see this is so much smaller. So pretty crazy to see the sexual dimorphism, the differences in size between the males and the females. Um, but yeah, this is one of my favorite species of turtles. Uh, they're just so unique looking. and. Um, I absolutely love to see them. So we're gonna get a couple pictures of this turtle and then let it go back in the stream where we found it. So you don't always have to get into the water and get your hands on the turtle. You can also look for turtles by being completely hands off using binoculars or even if you don't have binoculars just walking around and looking in ponds and habitat like this and you want to look for logs that are sticking out of the water to try and find basking turtles. Uh, so some turtles are more inclined to bask than others. For example, we just spotted this beautiful uh, pretty large eastern painted turtle out on the log. You probably can't see it all the way out there but by using your binoculars you can uh, you can see a lot further and you can uh, actually identify a lot of turtle species. So it's a great way to uh, get out and cause a little less uh, stress on the turtles and you know you can really spot a ton of turtles. Researchers will actually use binoculars and other tools like scopes to uh, count turtles and monitor their population. So it's, it's another great way to, uh, to find turtles and it's one way I always carry my binoculars with me just in case. There's Greg on the other side of the creek and here we have three soft shell turtles just floating in the water on the bottom left the dark one is a female actually there's a slider in there too oh there's five turtles a couple of them just went down but there's four spiny soft shells and one probably melanistic slider that just dove down in the water you can see the little speckles the dots in the water that are the turtles it's cool to just come out and spot the turtles out in the water basking
When you're out looking for turtles, you don't just find turtles, and that's one of the coolest things about it. So we we're hiking along this edge, and Greg just spotted something pretty cool. It's a brown water snake. These guys are, uh, you know, one of the common water snakes, part of the Nerodia group. And uh, these guys like to hang out in trees during the day and then come out and hunt for uh, catfish at night. So this guy's got like a meal, recent meal in him of probably a little catfish and uh, just kind of caught him on the move. So probably this year, you know, born this year, these guys are live bears. So these guys hatch out kind of like a garter snake. They'll hatch out in a group of live young and they'll just kind of disperse all over the creek, which is cool. So one of my favorite of the water snakes, these guys can actually get pretty big too and heavy bodied, which is really nice. A great place to start looking for turtles is on a bridge. So we're on a bridge over uh, a large uh, moving body of water and you can go out, walk on a bridge and take binoculars if you have them and just look as far down uh, the river as you can and you can look down into the water and um, usually on sunny days it's the best for you know spotting basking turtles uh, but you never know what you're gonna see and you always also want to think about the clarity of the water because sometimes it'll be really silted and sometimes it will be uh, less silted so you'll be able to see uh, deeper into the water but we're really lucky here in the southeast because we have quite a few awesome turtles here. All right so the southeast U.S. is a turtle diversity hotspot for the entire world. Uh, you can go in states like Georgia, Florida, Alabama, uh, Mississippi, Louisiana, all the way over to Texas and you're gonna have uh, between 26 and even 30 or more species of turtles and a lot of what that has to do with is our river systems. Uh, these river systems can you know be home to a variety of map turtles, cooters, sliders, snappers, musk turtles, soft shells, um, musk turtles, mud turtles, box turtles along the perimeter. You know, you get into the south and there's gopher tortoises. So the south has a whole lot of, you know, turtle diversity. And then when you start getting out into these river systems and you start wading those creeks, you're gonna come into contact with all those different species. And, you know, like Gabe said, you can also go bridge, bridge spotting with a set of binoculars. And, you know, like right here, I see, you know, right off the bat, I see a soft shell next to a river cooter. So you have that much diversity that you can see things like that. So Greg and I came down on the side of the bridge and flipped the sign over and there's a plain bellied water snake right here. Another really cool find. Yeah. Alright so Greg and I were walking along uh, the river and Greg noticed something and he's gonna tell you a little bit about it. So what this is, this is an illegal turtle trap, some redneck made out of like chicken wire and we found like uh, pieces of dead turtles in here where he let it drown and didn't check his trap. Uh, in the state of Georgia, all traps have to be made to certain specifications. They have to have a certain size excluder ring so the turtles that are you know, too small can get out. And you also have to have an attached uh, info card with your name and your DNR permit permitting number to you know, make it that you're illegal to use these traps. Obviously, this moron didn't do that. He just made it out of chicken wire. So I'm going to um, wrap it around this tree and make it a pain in the butt the next time he comes down here and wants to use his crusty little trap. So I decided in lieu of wrapping it around a poor defenseless tree, I'm going to just wind this thing as tight as I can. And if you've ever had to deal with wound up chicken wire, uh, once you get it tight enough, it doesn't really come back. And I don't really want this to ever come back. So I'm making this as big of a pain in the butt as I possibly can for this guy. Yeah, so unfortunately turtles are some of the most, most poached animals really on the planet. Uh, you might have heard some about some of the large confiscations that have happened around the world, like the uh, radiated tortoises in Madagascar and all sorts of um, different species in Southeast Asia as well, where there's a high diversity of turtles. Uh, but it's really unfortunate um, due to their natural history, their biology, they just really can be pretty defenseless and people can really take advantage of them. Uh, you know, but we're trying to educate people and, and teach them to respect the turtles and value them for the right reasons. Uh, and it's really sad to see things like this, but you definitely do come across it. 